Hello, it's Alex, the Bookubus. First up, I hope you all had a wonderful Halloween. I had a pretty quiet one, but it was still nice. Um, I dressed up, of course. I uh, went with Lil from Twin Peaks Firewalk with me. And yeah, it's a costume I've wanted to do for a really long time and finally decided to do it this year and I was really pleased with how it turned out. So that was fun. And yeah, otherwise my husband and I just stayed in and uh, yeah, we had a bunch of trick-or-treaters come by. And if you are still looking to continue with the Halloween spirit, if you're not quite done with it yet, there are a couple of videos that are Halloween related that I was a part of. One I think I already mentioned, but it's worth mentioning again, is the Halloween special over at Mercer's channel, Harpies in the Trees. And I was also part of Marie's pumpkin carving video over at Marie McWilliams. So yeah, definitely go check those videos out if you haven't already. They're really fun and Halloween-y, of course. So I will, yeah, leave links to both of those. Today I'm going to be sharing book haul part two. So I have acquired, yeah, a ton of books over the past couple of months. It has been like library book sale season here. So not going to miss out on the opportunity for digging for interesting gems and uh, yeah, all for very cheap. And of course I ended up getting quite a few. So um, excited to share them with you, of course. And I had put a poll up on my Instagram stories recently just to see what video you guys wanted to see next because I was deciding between book haul part two or my October reading wrap up and I was actually leaning towards doing the wrap up and at some point when I checked the votes that was in the lead but then yeah by the time voting was over book haul had actually pipped it to the post so here we are with the book haul but hopefully next Sunday I will have my October reading wrap up up and the following Sunday if all goes to plan I will be sharing my wrap up of the other movies I watched during the run up to Halloween. So yeah that's the next couple of weeks plan anyway after that who knows we will see. So most of the books I'll be sharing today are vintage paperbacks mostly horror uh, there's a mixture of adult horror and YA and aside from that I have one new book which I'm excited about and yeah there was one book that my husband had found for me at a thrift store and then the rest of the books actually came from one place so I think there were about 30 books <laughs> that I got there and they were I think the most I paid for any of them was one dollar some were as cheap as 25 cents so yeah I think the 30 books and we got a couple of other things as well were it was about like 20 something dollars so it was insanely cheap and this was a book sale about an hour away from where we live so it was kind of like I hope it's worth the trip and uh, yeah since my husband is doing the driving so uh, yeah thankfully it was totally worth the trip but it was in a really big space and it was honestly quite overwhelming to begin with because it's just full of tables which are full of books and we got there pretty early so it wasn't too busy but yeah we were there for probably just under an hour and by that point it had started to get pretty busy so we were you know ready to leave at that point and I decided to do like a you know perimeter walk get my bearings you know see the lay of the land and um, keep an eye out if they had a dedicated horror section and they did but there was hardly any actual horror in there it was kind of uh, yeah a weird mixture of just random paperback books honestly but I did find some good horror gems in there I found a Guy and Smith book which I was very excited about it was like the first thing I saw that you know caught my eye and so I like lunged for it it's mine and I also saw a William W Johnstone book which I nabbed and yeah a couple of other gems that were actually in this very small horror section 
And then after that I just wandered and they had just a huge area full of mass market paperbacks, you know, that weren't really split up into any kind of genre or anything. But I just spent most of the time browsing through those. Yeah, found some goodies. And then I also found they had like a young adult section and they had a lot of vintage stuff there too. And, um, you know, I don't know if you've been to sales like this, but they normally have stuff out on the tables and then they have more stuff in boxes underneath the tables. Um, so, you know, it's there for them to pull out once uh, the tables, you know, kind of get more empty. But obviously you can dig through them while you're there, they're all for sale. <laughs> so I was, yeah, digging through all these boxes and finding some real gems and just being like, oh my God, this is amazing. And yeah, found some goodies, was very excited about it. We left the place. I was like, hi, I was buzzing. I was just like, this is the best thing. I'm so excited about all of these amazing books that I found. So yeah, it was a fun time. So let's get on to showing you these books. Okay, so we'll start with the new book which I bought. This is Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumfit. I mean, who could resist that title? And yeah, brilliant cover, I love the design. And the only thing I really read up on this was the kind of brief blurb at the top here, which I will read to you. It says, a dark, unflinching, haunted house novel that takes readers from the well of the literary gothic up through Brighton's queer scene and out into the heart of modern day trans experience. I just thought that sounded amazing and I need it in my life. And yeah, I uh, snapped up a copy. Uh, I bought it online and it got delivered recently. And it also came with a uh, like a mixtape on Spotify which is a really cool idea and a bookmark and it is signed which I didn't realize it was going to be signed when I bought it so that was a really awesome surprise and it also also came with a poster which is not going to fit into the frame at all but it's the front cover basically um, and uh, yeah, so that's just a really cool little package um, that came along with the book and I'm very excited to read this one. I'm hoping to get to it this month so I will, yeah, get back to you with my thoughts sometime soon. Next is Greystone Bay edited by Charles L. Grant. This is a book that my husband found for me sometime recently. I think he found it in a thrift store and obviously he knows me well enough to see this book and grab it for me. And this one looks really cool. And I think all of the stories by the different authors are all set within this fictional town of Greystone Bay. So yeah, that's a pretty cool idea and sounds like it will be good and atmospheric. And the rest of the books are from the big book sale that I went to and yeah, they're all vintage horror titles. I have split them up into the adult fiction and then the young adult fiction. So I'll go through the adult ones first otherwise they're in no particular order. And first up is an anthology, Prime Evil, which is edited by Douglas E. Winter. And I do have a hardback edition of this, but I was like, yeah, but the paperback is really cool too, and it's metallic and everything, so... And this was in pretty decent shape. So, figured I'd grab it, and... Um, yeah, now I have two copies, so I should probably read one of them at some point. Shadow Man by Dennis Etchison, which has a 
kind of step back art going on here and this is part of the Dell Abyss line which the ones that I've read I have enjoyed I'm sure not all of them are <laughs> as amazing as the others but I was still pleased to find this and uh, yeah looks like it could be interesting Perfume the Story of a Murderer by Patrick Suskind and this is one that I first heard about when the film adaptation came out whenever that was um, but the book itself I believe came out in the 1980s and this one has kind of a step back art there and this one is set in 18th century France and is about a character who has this very intense sense of smell and yeah, it's killing people. So um, yeah, it's been quite some time since I saw the film so I'm a bit hazy on the details but I think I enjoyed it and I saw the book so I figured I'd grab it. Coco by Peter Straub. I have read Ghost Story by him, which is probably his most famous novel, and I had a mixed experience with it. Um, but then I read a short story by him, which I absolutely loved, so I would definitely like to try another of his novels. And this one is a bit of a chunky fellow, but I've heard really good things about it, so figured I would snap it up while I saw it. Evil Reincarnate by Lee Clark and this one has these cool masks on the cover and is something about a psychiatrist and a character who apparently is a murderer and sexual psychopath so that sounds fun and um, one of the blurbs says it's a ride through centuries of steamy terror so okay figured why not give that one a go. The Cunning by Robert Block. I love this cover with the like snake arm and the glass of it's probably blood let's face it and I don't know if you can see and if this is gonna focus. Okay finally got it to focus but the etching on the glass is a skull pattern. What a great little detail. And Robert Block is of course most famous for writing Psycho, which I still haven't read. I really do need to read that one of these days. But yeah, this was a really cool find and I love the back that says the chills, the creeps, the cunning. So yeah, I haven't actually read what this one's about, but yeah. I mean, can't resist that cover. Survivor by J.F. Gonzalez. And I had actually just recently read this one on uh, Kindle um, before stumbling upon this paperback copy at the book sale. And I enjoyed it, so I figured I would grab a hard copy and I think there are some differences between the Kindle version and this one, but you know, I figured I'd grab this anyway because it does have a cool cover. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this one is about a character who is kidnapped and is going to be in a snuff film. And uh, yeah, so part of the story is following her, trying to escape from this situation. Yeah, there's some other things going on, but yeah, this one's definitely at the extreme end of horror. It's uh, pretty brutal and uh, yeah, graphic and gruesome. And yeah, I, I thought it was really good. So was really happy to find a paperback copy. Fiends by John Farris. Death soars on the soft wings of night. And this one does have some if I can open it in artwork, but it's mainly just blurbs, so 
not quite as interesting. But uh, yeah, this one's quite a long one, but could be interesting. I have read All Heads Turn When the Hunt Goes By by this author and I really enjoyed that one. So yeah, I've been meaning to read more of his work. Dead End by Guy N. Smith. I gasped when I saw one of his books and immediately grabbed it, of course. And yeah, it's a shame the cover has a bit missing, but I wasn't going to leave it behind, obviously. And yeah, this is a zebra title. And I think this one came out in the mid 90s and you know, it's probably one of his lesser known titles, you know, when you've got things like Night of the Crabs and the other crazily titled ones, they're the ones that kind of stick out. But nevertheless, I was really pleased to find one of his books. Swastika by Michael Slade. This is a uh, series, I think it's called the Special X series. I've read the first two which were Headhunter and Ghoul and I enjoyed them both and yeah this one is kind of several on <laughs> into the series. I don't think you necessarily have to read them in order but I think there might be some links to them so you know I'm so far going in order. But yeah since I have enjoyed the other ones that I've read so far I figured I would grab this one and yeah it says two serial killers are taking hate crimes to the extreme so uh, yeah and obviously we've got this um, what I can only assume is gonna be some kind of Nazi character um, so yeah um, I guess I'll have to read that one and find out Moonfall by Tamara Thorne. She's an author I've been wanting to read for quite some time so I was really pleased to find one of her books and it was only when I had got it home and read the synopsis that I realised it was set around Halloween so I of course added it to my October TBR and I have already read this one and I enjoyed it. Yeah it's about a character who goes back to the orphanage that she grew up in that is run by a group of nuns and yeah of course there's some kind of dark secret going on there that she is uncovering. Um, yeah I will talk about this a little more in my October reading wrap up which will hopefully be coming out next Sunday. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Lord of the Dead by Tom Holland. This one unfortunately does have a bit of cover damage here but oh well and yeah it's a very shiny metallic cover and this one is some kind of vampire story and I think it's using Lord Byron as a character. Um, I assume a fictionalized version of his life but yeah I really don't know I haven't heard too much about this one but I do love a good vampire story so yeah figured I will give this one a try sometime. Okay another one I was very excited to stumble upon is Rocking Horse by William W. Johnstone. I have read one of his books The Nursery and yeah I mean it was super trashy but <laughs> still somewhat entertaining and uh, yeah I was super psyched to find this one because it has an amazing cover. It's a zebra title of course and yeah this one isn't in too bad shape so I was doubly happy to find it and yeah obviously it's about a creepy rocking horse. What more could you want really? So yeah that was definitely one of my favourite finds from this whole trip. One Rainy Night by Richard Lehman. Figured I would snap up 
alignment title since I stumbled upon it. And this one sounds like it's about something strange happening that the rain seems to have brought about and it's yeah turning people into like crazed maniacs and people are turning violent towards each other um, so it sounds quite like the fog by james herbert um which i read many years ago and enjoyed because it was kind of mental um so yeah maybe this is more of the same but probably with more rumps so yeah could be a good time ferocity by stephen laws and funnily enough it actually looks like a cat has mauled this copy <laughs> so yeah we've got a couple of scratches on the front here and this one looks like a creature feature type story and it's set in Northumberland in the UK which is an area of the country that I've visited a couple of times and it's very picturesque and lovely and um, yeah I like novels set in the UK so um, I've read one of the Stephen Laws books Spectre which I really enjoyed so I look forward to giving that one a go The Voice in the Basement by T. Chris Martindale. I really like this cover and the figure there is actually really creepy. And I think I found this one in the like kids and YA section when I was rummaging through a bunch of boxes. And it kind of does have that look with the cover because it's really bright and it's got this kind of jaunty text. Um, but when I looked it up, I don't think it is. <laughs> I think this is an adult horror novel. So yeah, anyway, interesting. And I think this one is about a couple that move into a new home and of course things go wrong and there's something evil in there. So yeah, could be a good time and yeah, absolutely love that cover. Okay, two more adult horror novels to talk about. This one is Gilded Needles by Michael McDowell. This was another one that I was very excited to find and may have audibly gasped <laughs> when I spotted it. I really love this cover and I've read a few of his novels and enjoyed them. And this is one that, yeah, I still needed to get my hands on. So was very happy to find a copy. And this one has the red page edges which is very cool and yeah it does have some damage on the back here but what are you gonna do um it was like a dollar or something so yeah i was still very happy to find it and i really look forward to giving this one a read and surrogate child by andrew niederman i have amassed a few of his books now and yeah, really need to get to reading them. I really enjoyed Pin. That one was absolutely brilliant. So yeah, this one is about, I think, a couple and their son dies. And they end up adopting or fostering another child. But of course, there's something creepy going on with him. So yeah, that could be fun. Okay, and now we have like a transition book from the adult fiction to the young adult fiction. It is a novelization of Gremlins and this is written by George Guype based on the screenplay written by Chris Columbus. And yeah, I just figured why not snap this up? Love the film, it's super fun. And uh, yeah, as we would expect it has some pictures in the middle which of course my camera isn't going to focus on because why would it um but yeah i thought this was a fun find okay so moving on to the ya horror most of these are vintage like 80s and 90s i think there are a couple that are maybe early 2000s so not quite technically vintage but yeah anyway first up we'll kick this section off with 
uh, a good one. I found not one but two of the Friday the 13th books by Eric Morse. I, yeah, this was another like freak out moment. I found these while literally digging through boxes that were underneath the tables that were covered in books as well. So yeah, it was kind of crazy, but I found some absolute gems hidden away in these boxes. So it was well worth digging. And um, yeah, you know, these were like a dollar each or something. And um, I did already have a copy of the second book, Jason's Curse, which I found in a Goodwill. Um, and so I was like, well, should I grab this one or shall I leave it for someone else to find? But I knew that my friend Kelsey over at Slime and Slashes would love to have a copy of one of the Friday the 13th books. So of course I grabbed it and sent her one of the copies. She was actually born on a Friday the 13th, so she naturally has a bit of an obsession with anything Friday the 13th related. And yeah, I have already read this one. I think I read it last year and it was really, really fun. So yeah, and um, this is the other one that I found that I did not already have a copy of. This is the first book in the series Mother's Day. And yeah, what a freaking amazing cover. Jason's back and he wants his mommy and yeah so now I have uh, books one two and I also have book four and um, so I am only in need of the third book now to complete the Friday the 13th 90s YA series which is just you know just brilliant that that even exists so yeah this was definitely one of my favourite finds of the whole trip. The Fog by Caroline B. Cooney, not related to James Herbert's The Fog or the film The Fog by John Carpenter. This is a different fog and I think is part of a trilogy, but this is the first one, so at least I'm able to start it at some point and I've enjoyed some of Caroline B. Cooney's other 90s YA titles so yeah it was a no-brainer to grab this one. I'm gonna take a wild guess that it doesn't get quite as insane as The Fog by James Herbert but you never know. When No One Was Looking by Rosemary Wells this one might be more of a mystery than the kind of horror thriller end, but yeah, we're still really happy to find it. It looks like it could be a fun read and I think there's a murder and uh, yeah, so we're following that mystery. Another really fun find was On the Devil's Court by Carl Duker. Give me a full season of power and my soul is yours. And we have this just very creepy basketball. Like I just don't know how to describe it, but I don't like it. I think this one might have been mentioned in Paperbacks from Hell. I'd definitely seen the cover before and obviously wasn't going to leave it behind. So yeah, and it's not in bad shape at all. But yeah, it's about a kid who basically sells his soul in order to be a basketball star. I mean, who wouldn't really? So yeah, amazing. The next two are a bit more recent. I think they're from the 2000s but they're ones I wasn't familiar with and they're both vampire related. So I figured they could be fun, so why not grab them? One of them is Vampire Kisses by Ellen Schreiber. And I think this one is about a goth girl who is obsessed with vampires and then like finds that there's a vampire living next door or something. I don't know, sounds kind of brilliant. And um, I believe this one is the first in a series so yeah at least I can give this one a try sometime and, and see how I like it. Uh, 
and the other is Vampire Beach Bloodlust by Alex Duval. Paradise has a dark side. So yeah, I mean, it looks super cheesy, but how could I say no? And I mean, it was see as seen in Cosmo Girl, guys. So come on, get on this, really. Yeah, it's um, it's called Vampire Beach. What more do you need to know? Okay, we've just got a few more to go. I was very happy to find three Lois Duncan books. One of them is, of course, I Know What You Did Last Summer, and this is the movie tie-in edition. And I remember seeing this film at the cinema when it came out, and I've, yeah, always been curious to read the book. So now that I have a copy, I can. I also found The Twisted Window. And yeah, this is new guy at school, gets the attention of main character, but he's probably creepy. Um, he looks more bored here, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, but anyway, <laughs> this, yeah, I mean, it sounds fun. So I was happy to find it. And Gallows Hill, which is about witches, I believe, and a town where there had been some accusations of witchcraft many years ago. And yeah, and then this probably all, all comes back in the present day. So yeah, I'm excited to read that one. And last up is Summer Lightning by Wendy Corsi Staub. Love that will not die. And yeah, great cover. I love the purple title. And this one I think is about a teenage girl who meets a ghost and she then has to choose between the ghost or her boyfriend. So yeah, I mean, classic teenage rite of passage really. And the fun thing about this one is that I noticed when I got home that it is signed by the author, if this is going to focus, <laughs> and it says, for Stephanie, for whom I used to babysit, love Wendy Corsi Staub, the book nook 71093. So yeah, I thought that was really awesome. And kind of a shame that Stephanie, who was babysat by Wendy, got rid of this book and this keepsake, but you never know what the situation was there. And uh, yeah, this did come out in 1993, so this must have been a book signing, you know, when the book was actually released, which is really cool. And this one does sound like a fun read, and since it is, I assume, set in the summer, I might have to wait till next summer to read it, but we will see. So that is part two of all of the books I have accumulated over the past couple of months. Yeah, library book sale season has been good this season. Um, definitely can't complain. I found loads of great books for really great prices that I'm really excited about. It's just, yeah, the constant struggle of having too many books and not nearly enough time to read them all. Um, you know how it is. You know how it is. Anyway, do let me know if you've read any of these. I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know if there are any here that you're interested in and think I should read sooner rather than later. And yeah, again, I hope you all had a really awesome Halloween. I hope you're having a good November so far. It's definitely gotten chilly here. We have like a brief kind of autumn period here where, it, you know, summer is over. We've got like a month of autumn. Now it feels like winter already. It's, it's frosty in the mornings. Anyway, I will sign off. I hope you are all doing well. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye.